you see that you can have structures like suppose na two o or let's not take na every time let's take okay and na two or k two let's take k two so k has nineteen electrons so it's two eight eight one and it can easily get rid of this one electron and make a stable configuration of 288 with 8 in its outermost orbit so this and a obviously it can accept seven electrons but that is not uh, that requires a lot of energy so we it's it does not happen so one electron it will lose And because it loses one electron, there has to be one positive charge, so it becomes K plus. And oxygen, if you see that oxygen has an electronic configuration of 2, 6. So, basically it needs two electrons to make, to make it 2, 8. But, Potassium has donated only one electron. It says I have only one electron and but oxygen says I need two electrons. Otherwise, I cannot change into an ion. So what it does that it takes one electron from this potassium and it takes another electron from another potassium. So basically, one oxygen requires two potassiums. So, you write the equation like this because the oxygen will require two electrons, not one electron. So, oxygen will take up these two electrons and become O2 minus. See, two, 2 minus charge, 2 minus charge. And here, 2 plus, 2 minus, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this is the equation and so this k will become k plus or rather 2k plus and oxygen will become O2 minus and one oxygen will require two potassium or in other words two potassium will require one oxygen so k2o will be formed and the electron dot structure will be K oh, K has only one but we need two K's and oxygen has one two three four five six and this two K's will donate their two electrons to oxygen and this will become K2 2 plus, remember this does not become 4 plus, it remains K plus and K plus. It's just K plus plus K plus. So, K2, 2 plus. And this, 6 of its own, 2 taken from the 2 Ks and 2 minus. And then K2. So, you see that we just write these structures like this, like K2O or, or NaCl, but they don't actually exist as Na and Cl just joined together. They exist as Na plus and Cl minus ions. And their property is that whenever they are dissolved in water or any solvent as such, so, most probably water, they'll break up into their individual ions. And now, sodium will have no relation with chlorine. Chlorine will have no relation with sodium. They'll be roaming about freely. Obviously, there will be forces because a plus always attracts a negative. But, they'll get separated. So, that means sodium will have forces with 
Cl, this Cl minus also, as well as other Cl minus which come from other molecules of NaCl. So it's not like this. There is one atom of NaCl. There is another atom of NaCl. These are different. This has no relation with this. Not like that. It's that whenever they are dissolved in water. NaCl will break up into Na plus Cl minus, and they'll be scattered around like this. And obviously, the number of Na plus will be equal to the number of Cl minus, so the net charge will be balanced. Uh, you can try drawing this electron dot structure of, or not any two o. Try drawing the structure of MgO. First try, then I'll show you. Okay, so Mg has twelve electrons. Two, eight, two. O has six electron. Two, six. Mg will become Mg two plus and two electrons. O now O needs two electrons. Mg has given two electrons, so both are very happy. I have given you two electrons. I need exactly two electrons, so it takes up this two electrons and becomes O two minus. And then the electron dot structure would be remember that these electrons are only the electrons in the outermost shell. You don't draw the electrons which are present in the innermost shell. Like I have drawn only the two eight two, the two which are outside. Not the two eight which were inside the shell. In oxygen also two six. I had drawn. I have drawn only six electrons in the outermost shell. So this will just give one electron, two electrons, and then it will become Mg two plus and O one two three four five six seven eight two minus. So, this is about electron dot structures. In this combining, you must have seen that the non-metal like O, C, L, these were always the ones which were accepting the electrons, and the metals were the one which were donating the electrons, and that is the characteristic property. Metals generally do not accept electrons. They donate electrons, and non-metals mostly accept electrons. So that's why metals donate these electrons to non-metals. So they form these compounds of metals and non-metals. 